Hi there, my name is Dave Lockwood and I just wanted to uh, share some things that I've learned. My son and I, Logan Lockwood and myself, we have learned uh, a bunch about the scrap metal business over the last few years. Uh, we were in the real estate business for a long, long time and pretty much the rules of real estate have been rewritten, at least for the short term. And uh, we, we just, we didn't want to go work for someone else and we wanted to continue down the path of having, you know, control of our own time and be able to work from home and some things like that. And um, the scrap metal, uh, this video is all about how to do scrap metal. And it is a broad uh, cross section of a bunch of different types of ways of doing scrap metal. What I'm, what I'm showing you in this video, and it's a long video, it's about 45 minutes long, I'm showing you how we do scrap metal, and I've applied a lot of the things that I've learned in the real estate business as far as uh, being uh, efficient and effective with my time. I've learned that there's certain things that just don't make any sense to scrap. They take too long to get the scrap out for the amount of money that you're going to get out of it. And I've learned that scrap metal is everywhere. Uh, for a long time, uh, I actually drove around on the streets in the evening after Logan went to bed and, and picked up stuff off the, the curb. And um, early on, all I picked up really was furniture. And then I learned after a while that uh, all these guys are driving around with the scrap, all the scrap metal on the back of their trucks. And I, re I figured out very quickly why that made uh, a lot of sense. Basically, it makes sense because of this, and you probably already know this, but... You pick it up, you take it to the scrap metal place, and it's instant money. It turns into cash immediately. You don't have to wait to, to put it on Craigslist or eBay or whatever to get your money out of it. It's incredible what people throw away. Um, and it makes sense in a lot of ways because they'll have a little bit of scrap metal, and nobody wants to make a trip to the, to the, uh, the scrap metal yard for just one or two or ten or fifteen pieces. And there's plenty for, uh, for everybody. You, you might go out doing the scrap metal thing. I haven't done it for a couple of years, but you run across four or five other guys that are doing the same thing that you're doing, and they've got full truck loads, and you've got a full truck load. And uh, my experience with that has been, uh, on average, as far as if I spent two to three hours out on the road on a, on a garbage day, and I've done this in a couple different markets. I've done it in Tampa and Charlotte, North Carolina, and also here in uh, Florida, that you're, you know, two hundred, hundred, hundred dollars on a on a bad night, three, four hundred dollars on a really good night, an average of two hundred dollars um, when you when you drive around and you're and you're smart about it. That is. So, what I'm going to show you in this video is how we do scrap metal. It may be there may be better ways. All I know is that every couple weeks. We have four to five hundred dollars worth of scrap metal with hardly any effort at all. Um, sometimes we'll have a thousand dollars worth of scrap metal. So it just it just varies. On an average, um, an average would probably be five hundred dollars every two weeks with little to no extra effort um, with our our junk removal business. And the junk removal business is is a really sweet little business and. Uh, I have a video that's below this, uh, I got three free videos below this uh, YouTube video uh, that teach you basically uh, the broad uh, overview of that business and a lot of details. Uh, if you're not, if you're having, if you're struggling getting a job, you're in between jobs, you're a felon, you don't want to work for other people, you like to work from home, this is a real business. It's it's like storage wars, junk. Uh, it's like storage wars and pickers on, on steroids almost because you're not you're you have no money in any of this stuff. And if you choose to do nothing other than drive around and pick stuff up on uh, on garbage day and uh, fix a few things and sell them or whatever, you can make you you can make a hundred to two hundred dollars a day with no problem with very little effort and not a very big car either. Or if you want to turn this into a more of a, a business and, and support your family off of it or, or you're a Christian family and you're homeschooling or whatever and you want to do all this stuff together, it really is 
uh, it's a viable business and it's a respectable business and it gives you a lot of opportunities to to give back it gives you a lot of uh, options as far as time goes you can do uh, you basically you can advertise for free on to get stuff and then you can advertise for free to sell it uh, Craigslist and Backpage and eBay classifieds and all these other different things are all free and uh, they work they absolutely work so Barry I just want you to understand that I'm not a professional spokesperson and that I'm um, just a, a regular guy grew up poor worked my butt off had a bunch of real estate stuff and then the game the whole game changed on me so and this is what we do to make money now and uh, now it's so it's so fun and exciting um, we, want to, we want to teach other people how to do this stuff so that if you're struggling or, or you're tired of, of your boss or you're not making enough money or you want to supplement your income or you're a felon and you can't find a job it's a really easy way to make money with stuff that's everywhere all around you every day it's proof is in the pudding look at goodwill goodwill is basically believe it or not it's government funded a good portion of it and the whole the whole reason that goodwill exists is to create jobs so a lot of those things that you go and you give and you donate to goodwill they turn around and they sell them for seven bucks ten bucks twenty bucks or whatever believe it or not ma the majority of the of the furniture ends up at, at the dump or at least around here it does I see them at the dump when we're at the dump uh, taking whole tractor trailer loads full of furniture that we sell every day on Craigslist and they just dump it off into the dump it's got a scratch or a nick on it I guess I don't know I don't know why they do that but that's it um, our website is www.howtomakemoneywithjunk.com and this is a free video it'll teach you you can pretty much learn how to get very good uh, and effective with scrap metal just off of this video if you watch it a few times and uh, that's it thank you how we do uh, the scrap metal portion of our junk removal business. Um, some of the things that you need to keep in mind, um, not everything that's scrappable is worth scrapping. Um, there's an awful lot of stuff that we get out of these junk removals and these demolitions that are absolutely worth uh, the time to scrap. The key is efficiency and uh, what you want to do is you want to put all your wire together, you want to put all your uh, things that are major uh, types of uh, metals, put them together. For example, you might want to position all your regular metal, your, fer your ferrous metal, the magnetic metal, put it on one spot, put your bulk aluminum in another spot, and what you're doing is you're just kind of stockpiling so that you can efficiently uh, go through your scrap metal and, uh, and clean it up so that you get in the most for your time and effort. Um, a lot of the things that we do, watching the uh, property preservation guys do their clean outs and stuff and then taking just these whole truckloads of uh, some perfectly good scrap metal and perfectly good ebayable stuff and just dumping it off at the, at the dump. Um, we've seen that all the time and uh, you know we're not criticizing somebody else but we're just saying we, we know because we've been doing this for a long time that if uh, if you get a little bit of organization, you can make uh, you can make more money out of out of pretty much the same effort. So what the guys do on the job sites most of the time is they'll take and they'll put four or five bins around, um, and one bin will be for eBay stuff. The next bin will be for things that are not magnetic. The next bin will be for regular scrap metal. Um, or they'll put it in one part of the trail or the truck and, and we'll pull that off when we get here to, uh, to the, uh, the house. Then we just stockpile it when we get a certain amount of it then we go ahead and we scrap it out. So what I'm going to do today is this is not going to be a real organized uh, showing uh, of the scrap metal stuff but I'm going to give you kind of a broad brush cross section of what we do and why we do it and uh, show you what's worth messing with, what's not worth messing with, in my opinion. 
Um, the amount of scrap metal that we accumulate over about a two week period is, it's, it's pretty significant. It's normally, you know, four or five hundred bucks worth of stuff on, on a light week. And on a good week it might be a thousand dollars worth of stuff. So, um, I'm going to do my best to call this stuff what the uh, scrap metal guys call it. I, I don't know it like they know it, but I know it as far as how it applies to me and how I can make a little bit more money with it. So uh, right here, this is an example of some copper. This part of the copper, if it's got, uh, if it's got the solder on it, then this, this part of this is going to be number two. Typically something like this, we would take some bolt cutters and we cut it, and as long as our bolt cutters are sharp, so they not, might not be right now. So you cut that off, you end up with number two, and for, for this example, number one copper. Different parts of the country, we've done this in a couple different parts of the country. They call things different things depending on who's buying the scrap from the scrap metal yards. So this is an example of number two. This is an example of number one. This is for Cape Coral, Florida, Garden Street, who we sell most of our stuff to. So follow me over here, Logan. Right here is a whole bucket of number one. This over here is number two. This right here, it has a plastic coating on it. It has uh, other things on the wire. You notice the different colors, and you notice the solder. That makes it a number two grade. There is a higher grade than this, and it's called Bare Bright. And it's basically what you would get if you stripped off the skin, the skin off of uh, regular wire. This runs in the $2.50 to $3 a pound range. Um, this is going to be about 10 cents more. Okay, So it's not a huge difference, but copper is probably the, the top of the food chain as far as, as scrap metal goes. If you see here, this is, this is um, what they call, they, I've heard them call it spaghetti. I've heard them call it all kinds of different things. If you notice, this is kind of heavier, higher grade wire. Um, when we were up in Charlotte, they paid us more for this. They paid like a dollar twenty versus like a dollar a pound. Down here in Florida, they don't separate it that way. They just take it all in at one price. Uh, they just say this weighs more. So that's their mindset. So at any rate, you take that, and we did this this morning in about probably about a half hour. But you put all that together, push this down, that's about 60 pounds, so that's 60 bucks. So let me go back over here, and I'm going to take some wire, regular ordinary wire, and uh, show you how to do some of this. This is, uh, this is some of the wire that came off of a TV that we scrapped. And uh, what you got to do when you look at these is to see if it's really copper or not, because some of these are aluminum. So you cut them in half, and you can see. Now this is copper. This is if you got the time or you got a machine to do it. We actually did have a machine for a while, and we didn't find it cost effective to uh, to take the uh, the coating off of these wires. So you just put that in, and with that. This is some more stuff that came off of the back of the TV. And these wires here are definitely worth cutting. By the time you cut all this stuff off of a whole bunch of these, it's just amazing how many of those full bins of spaghetti wires you get. When you're doing this, all these little pieces right here, you need to cut them off. They don't want to see any of this plastic. They will put up with a little bit of the paper that's on some of these, like this right here. They don't mind that so much, but they don't want these ends. They will actually downgrade your whole load for two or three of these. And the funny thing about it is they won't... I've done the scrapping in a bunch of different places. They won't mention it to you. They'll just do it, and they won't say nothing to you. 
And then you'll look at your uh, bill and you'll go, or your receipt when you leave, and you go, holy cow, they downgraded this whole load just because there was three of those little pieces in there. You know, it could be one new guy comes in or somebody being lazy for the day, and they, they downgrade your whole load from, you know, a dollar uh, a pound to 30 cents a pound. This kind of stuff, when you cut it off, just hold on to it, let it accumulate, and just throw it in your shreds pile. When I'm talking about shreds, basically what you're talking about is you're talking about the uh, anything that is magnetic that can be taken in um, is just regular metal. And there could be a little bit of other stuff on like the rubber on bicycle tires, the rubber handles. If you scrap a whole car out, you know there's cushions and windshield and all kinds of stuff like that. And they, call, they bring all that in and they consider it shreds. So that's a term that they used up north and down here. Uh, back to the wire for a little bit. We'll stay on the wire for a few minutes. This is a piece of wire off of a computer. Can you bring those over closer? So again, we're cutting off the ends. And we're going to let those build up. It's amazing. We've, we've actually sometimes... We would take a whole 55 gallon drum and just throw all those little pieces in just to see how much, if, how long it would take to accumulate something like this. And it's amazing, a 55 gallon drum full of those can weigh a significant amount of weight. You know, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit really, really adds up when you're talking about scrap metal. So, again, we hold on to that. Notice the little tag here. Those are generally okay in all of the places that I've scrapped, which would be Tampa, Cape Coral, Florida, well actually it's Fort Myers, Florida, and up in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. We actually went to four or five different scrap yards up there. That was okay with all, with all of them. Again, this is, the, uh, this is the band that goes around the TV, and you cut it, and you look in. Okay, now this one, you see it? That is... This is actually aluminum. Believe it or not, they really just don't even want this stuff at all here. So we'll throw this in with our dirty aluminum. Sometimes they throw it out and we throw it back on our truck. So where's our dirty aluminum? Okay, so if you notice, after a while, you'll notice certain kinds of TVs. They have the same, you know what kind of coils they have in them, and you might save yourself some time because that stuff's so lightweight and it's not really worth the effort. Like this is very, very light, which I'm thinking it's probably aluminum as well. No, nope. is that, it's copper, right? Or is that aluminum? Go back some more. All right, it looks, <coughs> looks like copper to me, so. So I'll take this whole piece here and throw this in with my spaghetti wire. That's off the back of the TV. This is probably a monitor from the back of a from a CRT monitors. So you cut all these wires off. You know, it might seem like it's a lot of work. Maybe it is, I don't know. But I know that this stuff, when we're running tight, we've always got our scrap metal we can lean back on, and it's just cash in the bank. You can go straight to the uh, scrap yard, take what you got, cash, you know, move on down the road. It's pretty cool. So this stuff here, we cut off all these different wires, got to get these plastic pieces off. This, again, we'll take these in a group and we'll bust these apart. Um, I'll insert that other video where we did this. But we'll accumulate these. I'll, I'll wait till I got 50 or 100 of them to do them all at the same time. So we won't do that right now. All right, on to a, a different thing. This is a this is an electric motor. Uh, these Badger motors they sell on eBay for anywhere from 35 to 50 bucks a piece. Um, it's probably about 10 pounds. You get about 29 cents a pound for this. So that's $2.90. 
turn around here for a second. Well, basically, you accumulate these other electric motors. This is uh, also an electric motor. Some places will make you knock the covers off of these. Some of them will just give you a little bit less for them. Generally, about 30 cents a pound for the electric motor. That's an electric motor. These are bilge pumps. This bilge pump here um, could possibly, I'd, I've sold a few of them on eBay, could, could be worth 30 bucks, 40 bucks, 50 bucks. It's a small enough thing that you could uh, mail it in a flat, flat rate box. Um, but we cut the wires off of that one. And this one. Okay, let's come back over here. Some more wires. If you pay attention, there is wire everywhere. And most of this wire, it gets thrown, it gets thrown in the garbage and goes to the, the recycling, it goes to the landfills and it doesn't benefit anybody. Now this kind of, this is a coaxial cable and up here and also up in North Carolina and in Tampa, they don't want this stuff. So sometimes it just depends on how much time I have. I'll just cut off the ends and keep the ends, believe it or not. And then the rest of this, I just throw it away. I don't want it. If you mix it in with your load, you might get away with it a couple times, but then what happens is the next time you come in, they're really going to watch your load. So the human error things that you make when you're not trying to make errors will not get overlooked. And they'll downgrade your loads a lot more frequently. So ideally you don't want to try to slide things by these guys. They get to know you when you come to the scrapyard on a regular basis. But as you can see, this is just a whole bunch of wire. This stuff's expensive if you go to buy it at, uh, at Radio Shack. But man, so much of this goes to the landfill every year. See, I'm looking through here and making sure there's no plastic pieces in that. But you can go through wires like this. You can go through them pretty quick. You hold them up in your hands like that and just pull them over and just keep looking for the ends. Next thing you know, you'll find your next one. You just cut it off and you've got Just throw it back over in there. Just little things you do that make things go a little faster. You know, this right here, these kind of uh, clippers, notice that they've got the, some leverage to them. They really save you on your, uh, when you're cutting a lot of wires, they save your hands. Alright, I didn't exactly say this was going to be as exciting as uh, anything that you've ever seen, but you can learn a whole bunch in this stuff. It's something you can apply anywhere. You can pull into a, a new city, drive around on garbage day, and pick up couple hundred dollars worth of scrap metal and you know in a couple hours and be off and running and having some money to get get through the day on why you maybe look for a job or something like that or let's say you got you're out of a job you can do this just about anywhere you can drive around pick up this stuff even just wire it's amazing just the amount of wire that comes out of just a couple weeks of our, our scrap metal stuff. The uh, same amount of stuff that we get in two weeks, if you drove around for two or three days picking up the scrap on the side of the road, you'd have about the same amount of stuff. All right, now this. We're on to another type of uh, metal. This is stainless steel. This is regular metal here. And since there's regular metal here, we can scrap this as um, we can scrap this as, as dirty stainless steel. Basically what, what I normally do is I would have a Sawzall set up with a metal blade on it. I cut that, I cut that, and um, I will put this in the stainless steel. This would be regular number one copper, this would be number two copper, and I would cut this piece here, and that would be number 
uh, one copper again, even though it's all dirty. might want to just take this stuff and just cut it off and keep it for when you might need that. After a while though, you have so many of these that you just don't need any more. But that's a sure sign that this is stainless steel because stainless steel doesn't come apart real easy. And when you're doing, when you're doing your scrapping, a cordless drill, razor knife, pair of pliers, flathead screwdriver, a heavy duty uh, hammer, if you got one, a sawzall, and some bolt cutters. Those are typically the things that you that you need. And this stuff here, I believe these are $10 or more at Lowe's. So in a yard sale, you could probably get two or three bucks for them. At the, uh, Take them in just for scrap. They're probably worth 30 cents, 40 cents. You know, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. It really it starts to add up. So these we're going to hold on to because we're doing some rehabbing right now. Just right here, we're going to pull this apart. The key is to get as fast, as efficient. certain things that don't pay off, uh, one of them being vacuum cleaners. Uh, you pull the cords off of them and Alright, now this, back to the magnet. This is very, very, very heavy. So. This is going to, no matter what we do because of this braided thing, it's going to be dirty stainless. So we'll put it over here with our other stainless steel. In our stainless steel bin, this is a heater from a uh, hot tub. Those little things at the bottom down there, those are elements to heat up like coffee or something like that in a restaurant. Dirty, dirty stainless. I believe it's in the 40 cent range is what it goes for. This right here, this is uh, going to be aluminum. This is regular metal. I put this stuff in my, this is called the uh, cast iron. This is just, it's on the shy end of being cast iron, but it's got a little bit of regular metal, a little bit of cast iron. I put the aluminum which gets more money. I'd rather put the mixed metal with, with the lower cost metal is 10% metal with this potential 30 cent metal. I'd rather them allow this as dirty than to allow it at 10% as dirty. Okay, this is sheet. When you're doing stuff like this, you want to make sure that the sheet, the bolts, the connectors, this is all sheet. Believe it or not, this thing right here, my bet you could get 10 bucks for that on eBay. So this is clean sheet metal um, aluminum. 
we have a bin for that? Yeah. The clean sheet goes right here. Something like this in a yard sale, you might be able to get two or three dollars, four dollars for it. It's just regular ordinary metal. Regular metal, ferrous. Ferrous metal is magnetic. Non-ferrous metal is anything that is not magnetic, which is like brass. Uh, like right here, this is a uh, Something like this, you don't know exactly what it is. What I do with stuff like this, if I don't know what it is, and I don't really know what it's worth, and I don't want to spend the time. Okay, this is aluminum. This is clean cast aluminum. I would also put this in the extruded pile. Extruded aluminum is aluminum that's pushed through a machine. It's the kind of aluminum you would see that's like a track on the side of your... Uh, your shower, that's extruded metal. What that basically means to them, more or less, is it's nice, clean, thick metal, or aluminum. So this would be, I'd put this in my extruded pile. It looks like it's brass, but it's not. There's a lot of, of the, uh, there's a lot of that kind of stuff that's aluminum, and it's thick enough, it's got some weight that you think it might be uh, brass. And then they'll do that. They'll take a grinder to it while you're there, and they'll cut it. The key is, is the more you separate the stuff, the more you get for it, and the less time you have to spend in line up there. So this right here. You hear the sound? That is aluminum. This is cast aluminum. And we'll put it over here in our cast aluminum pot. Okay. These actually would sell on eBay. They're kind of dirty, but they would sell on eBay for 20 bucks. I don't know if they're worth this, but now this is heavy. This probably weighs three, four pounds. This is going to be in the 250, 270 range for um, scrap metal, and this is clean brass. Do we have a bin for clean brass? So clean brass is almost as good as getting. Um, clean brass is almost as good as, as getting copper, so we'll just leave that sit there for now until we get a bit more. Uh, this is garbage. Okay, back to electric motors. Um, something like this, you'll want to put on your dongles. If you can break it apart real easy, it's, there's an electric motor in there. Okay, see the electric motor, you can pull it out relatively easily, just like that, then it's worth messing with. If you can't, it's not worth messing with. So then we'll just cut this free, that's good enough, we'll put it in, that weighs about two pounds. And the rest of this, pull the cord out as much as you can, cut it off, the plastic you pitch, and again, I can't emphasize enough that a little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit really ends up being a whole bunch of money, or can be a whole bunch of money, just depending on if you work smart and efficiently, it, it can be really worthwhile. And let's face it, you know, you're, you're saving the natural resources for the future generations. So, you see all this stuff here? I cut these off. I keep them. I put them in my shreds. So now you get, big, you get big clumps of this kind of stuff. And this is probably something we went through a while ago. This gizmo right here, this has uh, it has some metal inside of that. Again, we go back to the same old thing. If we can pop this free quickly, 
then we'll knock it out and pull it out. It's basically cast aluminum. So if you can get it out quick, great. If you can't, just toss it in your shreds. If it's got any kind of metal in it at all, you can toss it in your shreds. So once you get that opened up, you always want to go back to your magnet. Wherever my magnet is. Throw this stuff away. So this could be aluminum. This also could be regular metal. Okay. This could be stainless steel as well. That's metal. That's metal. And that's probably... Probably stainless. I'm gonna throw it in stainless. If you don't know, put it in my mixed stainless file pile. They'll correct you when you get there if it's not right. Okay. Back to this stuff here. A lot of this stuff, like these phones and stuff, they can be worth a lot more money on eBay than um, than you can get for scrap metal. You gotta figure out where your what your time's worth as far as the eBay and what your minimum is. This right here says it's solid brass. It's got the brass color. It sounds a little different. So there's some more solid brass. Going back through here, just pulling this big old rat's nest apart. That'll go into my. The difference in what you get is not as significant as you might think. This is basically, this is dirty um, sheet aluminum. So we'll put it in our dirty sheet aluminum bin, which is, do we have one for that? Dirty sheet? We do not. Things like this, speakers, they're not really trying kind to of pull them apart. Pots and pans, these are metal. Hear how they sound? That's regular metal. This is really, really light. If you can break the handle off real easy, cool. If not, you just put this into your, um, this is sheet aluminum. So again, by your magnet. Where's our dirty sheet aluminum? Is that here? Yep, dirty sheet. Dirty sheet. Okay, now, you see that? That is copper. This pan right here has been, somebody's modified it. This was somebody's favorite pan, probably. Wait, right, since this has been put on it, it's not worth messing with. This is actually uh, stainless steel and copper. I'll put it in my dirty, dirty stainless. But that's an example of something that if it had a normal handle on it, it would be worth putting it on eBay. Okay. This is thick. It's aluminum. And that's aluminum too. So what is this? cast. With it being this thick, do we have a clean sheet? You know, it's funny is I've been doing this long enough to know that you take it in, one guy will say that's sheet, the next guy will say that's cast. 
I, I don't really want to be right. I just want to, the difference in pricing is minimal, so it's really not that big a deal. All this kind of stuff like this, just keep your garbage can close by. Now this, where's my magnet? Hear that? To me, I think this is uh, stainless steel. Could be magnesium. Could be, well, with the weight, it's either stainless steel or magnesium. Probably stainless steel. But you see this little gizmo inside of here? That makes it dirty.